Hi everyone, I'm Chris, an applications engineer with Cadence. Thanks for your interest in our software and for taking the time to view this. Today I'll be talking about our network synthesis wizard, which is a feature in the Cadence AWR design environment. We introduced the synthesis wizard in version 14 of our software, that was in 2018. Uh, version 15 was released in early May of 2020, so just a couple months ago, and it contained updates for the wizard. Uh, most notably the capability to use actual component models for the synthesized networks rather than idealized components. Uh, so the first portion of this presentation will be reviewing our approach to network synthesis and how we see it fitting into design flows. And then we'll go into the details of how to use actual component models in, in version 15. Uh, so with that said, as an introduction, let's start with a few quick uh, points regarding how we see network synthesis fitting into design flows. Um, it can be used for a wide variety of RF and microwave applications, including high power amplifiers, LNAs, uh, conjugate matching problems, uh, whether they be broadband or multiband problems. We have an example of a, a multiband antenna match we'll be using in a few minutes, and also an interstage matching where you've got complex impedances on both sides. So all of those problems can be challenging and time consuming and synthesis can help uh, streamline uh, those processes for you. Uh, and uh, enable you to quickly explore a wide variety of candidate uh, matching network topologies. As mentioned in version 15, and uh, now you can use vendor library components uh, directly in the synthesis, as well as process design kit, PDK components. Uh, so instead of synthesizing with ideal components and then replacing them with the actual models, post-synthesis you can do uh, direct synthesis with the models themselves, saving more time. And we do believe this is useful at the beginning of the design to uh, determine uh, or quantify what are the realistic uh, performance limits or performance targets that you can approach. Uh, so a <clears throat> few notes about our uh, the specifics of our approach. We are taking advantage of uh, recent advantages, uh, excuse me, of recent advances in computer processing power and uh, algorithms as well. Uh, and uh, more specifically, <clears throat> we can uh, evaluate around 10 million circuit responses per second uh, on a modern PC. So we're taking direct advantage uh, of this. Uh, we do use a variant of genetic optimization uh, for the underlying search, for the, the actual topologies, as well as for the parameter values. And uh, this particular algorithm has, has proven very effective for circuit design problems. So of course, exactly the type of problem we're trying to tackle. Uh, now, continuing with a few more details, uh, in the wizard itself, uh, the user decides uh, which elements to consider for the series and slots in the matching network, and then we effectively uh, expand and explore all the possible solutions up to the ma maximum number of sections. Uh, so note that this maximum is another user input. Uh, that is, the user gets to decide uh, what's that maximum number of of matching elements uh, that you're uh, willing to consider. Uh, we do have uh, practical considerations that we take into account. Uh, for example, you can have stepped impedance transmission lines. Uh, that is to say a series transmission line can follow another uh, series transmission line, but we're not gonna have a series cap uh, follow another series cap. Uh, other practical stipulations that could be taken into account uh, DC open and short paths, uh, component limits. Uh, of course, in the case of using uh, the component models, uh, you get to decide exactly which models to use. Uh, you can take into account the uh, impact of bias and feed networks on your match. So if you have a, a bias network and you think it's going to impact the in-band performance, uh, you can take uh, the presence of that bias network into account when you synthesize your candidate networks. And also uh, constraints on the first and last elements 
can be placed. So if you're dealing with uh, packaged parts and you need to mount the part on your, on your board or your module, um, you can stipulate that the first or last element, for instance, would be a microstrip. Uh, so again, uh, quite a number of real world stipulations can be put in place. And so um, at each stage, we simply uh, sort, sort the solutions from best to worst uh, for each expansion. And we do give the user control uh, over the threshold for which solutions are considered to uh, push into the next, into the next uh, search expansion. And that allows the classic trade-off between search speed and uh, overall search depth. And of course, the overall result, uh, what we're going for uh, is an extremely comprehensive search. Again, taking advantage of that, uh, that processing power and the algorithm itself. Uh, so that was a quick review of our approach to network synthesis and some of the search details. Uh, now let's move on to what's new in version 15. Um, if you've used the wizard before, uh, this user interface should look familiar. And we're focused on the components tab of the wizard GUI. And you note that we've added some new checkboxes under the uh, series and shunt components for search. Uh, specifically, we've added vendor library inductor, capacitor, and resistor. Uh, note for the example I'm going to show, we're only using uh, vendor library inductors and capacitors, but you can use resistors as well. Uh, if you get the maximum number of sections up here, uh, that stayed the same as before. And how do you select which components uh, you want to use for your networks? Uh, use the select components button, obviously, and that will bring you to the next uh, GUI. And if you've used Microwave Office, uh, this should look uh, familiar as well. It's basically the uh, Elements browser, the bottom of the Elements browser, the Libraries tab that we've uh, brought into the into the Synthesis Wizard. So you just expand the Libraries tab, uh, search on down to uh, your vendor of interest or your part type of interest, select which specific components you want to use for your matching problem, uh, push them over to the right-hand pane here, and then you would have a tab for capacitors, inductors, and resistors, and select which components you want to consider with the, for the use of the checkboxes. And that's it. Those uh, models will be uh, part of the uh, matching network uh, search. Uh, also note that you can, once configured, save uh, this to a file, it's an Excel file, uh, and allows you to, next time you need to uh, synthesize networks, just load up the configuration, saves a few minutes there uh, instead of having to do this each time. So you might have a file for uh, vendor A, a file for vendor B, uh, 0402 size, 0603 size, uh, what have you. Uh, also note, if you have a PDK loaded in your project, that would appear here under the Libraries tab, and then it would be the same process. Just expand, find the components specifically you want to use, push them over to the right-hand side pane here, and make sure they're selected, and those will be used uh, for your candidate networks. Uh, so moving on to the example problem we're going to show. It is a, an antenna from Fractus. Uh, Fractus is an antenna manufacturer popular in the IoT space. And we've got the uh, raw antenna performance shown here, basically the uh, return loss, and more specifically the magnitude of the S11. We're trying to match for two bands, uh, low band 824 to 960, and high band 1.71 to 2.17 gigahertz. And we can see for the high band, we're already fairly well matched. Uh, at the low band, not at all. So we're going to come up with a, a single matching network that is going to improve that low band performance and trade off some of the high band while obviously not trading off too much performance at the high band. So at this point, let's actually bring up the software. So this is Microwave Office. Obviously, this is the graph uh, that we've captured for the PowerPoint. Uh, it is, again, the unmatched antenna with the two bands of interest. Highlighted, just want to mention where the uh, antenna data came from. Uh, it is a model I pulled in 
again, through the Elements browser here, uh, expand the Libraries node down to Fractus. Now we've selected an antenna, and we have a test bench where we've inst instantiated that file-based antenna model with a couple of uh, sub-band sweeps to show those, highlight those two bands. So again, just want to show where that antenna data actually originated from. Uh, now back to the project tree, I'll open the uh, wizard instance. And uh, this was obviously the setup has been saved along with some results. Uh, but just want to note the uh, dual band nature of the frequencies to match. You can see our high band and low band uh, components. We have selected those vendor library inductors and capacitors. So we're only considering those uh, discrete element match strictly for this example. And just want to show the goals tab quickly. One measurement, two goals, low band, high band. And you can uh, weight the goals separately. Uh, have sloped goals, what have you. Um, essentially anything you can do with our native optimizer uh, setup you can do with the synthesis wizard. Uh, we do have results saved. You can sort on component count. Uh, I'll sort on cost, get the lowest uh, cost five networks here we've put to microwave office. Uh, you can see a quick pictogram of each topology if you select it. Um, once you're happy, again, you do output to microwave office. I'll go back to the graph and quickly enable uh, a few measurements here that will show now the antenna uh, with the matching network. Networks in place. Uh, so we see we are improving uh, the low band performance substantially, trading off a bit of high band return loss. And then I can select the individual networks and see the response. Uh, update. If you like uh, data displays, you know, this is automatically created for you. You can customize after the fact, but we've got the same uh, graph and we can uh, now see uh, a view of the schematic for each of the networks. And we notice that they are in fact incorporating the actual uh, lumped element component models. Uh, so to finish up, we'll go back to the PowerPoint and just mention that uh, again, we're using the actual component models for our networks. And uh, you can actually constrain the number of unique uh, unique library components. So it's a bill of material simplification. Uh, if you like to do that, uh, again, constrain the number of components. Uh, so just one last slide. Um, we do uh, not only of course conjugate matching, but uh, we do integrate directly with load pole data. It's a big advantage for PA designers. I mentioned before that uh, interstage matching is supported, noise matching is supported, and a direct uh, Smith chart impedance target matching is supported. And now all those uh, you can use, again, vendor library components with each of these. Uh, so with that, I will conclude. Um, we hope you find our updates in version 15 useful, and of course, let us know if you have questions. Thank you.